to me, there were such such wonderful things there. Uh, the Lion and Unicorn built in, the Skylon, the Dome of Discovery, all these wonderful things. But to me at that stage, fashion didn't seem to follow modernism. There were men, most men were walking around still with Trilby hats on, which is so strange as you, as you see the pictures of that period. Britain can make it was an exciting period, but then the, the Festival of Britain was just that stride on again. What is very interesting is that David Booth's sideboard, with its routed pattern on the front of the doors, that was exhibited at the Festival of Britain in 1951. Looking back on it, it was such an exciting time. I mean, even the public, I remember being at an exhibition on our stand at Earl's Court, and there were so many people wanting details of the furniture that we had to get a stepladder for the uh, salesman to hand the leaflets out over the top of the crowds. It was unbelievable. The interest, because it was, you know, new, what was new. I first met Dick Russell, I suppose, in 1949. I was a student at the Architectural Association School in London, where, incidentally, Dick Russell train and his wife but it was at a time when students I guess it's still the same were encouraged during vacation time to try and work in architects offices to gain experience of the real world and I don't know what prompted me at the time but I think probably I became aware of the fact that Dick Russell was engaged was just about to engaged on designing the Liney Unicorn building uh, for the Festival of Britain and I thought, well, that would be a very interesting office to get some experience. I don't know why I thought I was going to be able to get a, a job, because there was Dick Russell, professor of the Royal College, in charge of the School of Furniture um, and Product Design, and there must be any number of students who would have liked to have worked in his office during the vacation. But anyway, I pestered the life out of the poor man, and eventually I went to see him, and he said, well, you better come, a bit reluctantly. So I went and had this enormous good fortune to be working in a very, very junior way on the Lion and Unicorn building at the Festival of Britain, which in itself was a very, very exciting period. I mean, coming post-war, after years of austerity, I mean, it was a very exciting project. It took to London, and London took to it in a very big way. During Gordon Russell's period in public life from 1942 around 1960, apart from utility furniture, the creation of the Design Council and the reorganisation of the Royal College of Art, all of which were towering achievements in, the, in their own right, he was also a major player in the Festival of Britain in 1951. He was responsible for pavilions, a showcase of, of British wares, and the whole idea of the, of the Festival of Britain was to show that Britain, even though it was beginning to seed territories, its empire was beginning to ebb away, but it could still be in this new post-war era of trade and technology and progress. Britain still had something to say and it was an incredibly optimistic statement that was devised with the Skylon and all these wonderful pavilions and Russell was right in there orchestrating, curating, doing what he did best which was making connection and making things happen. I think he was very disillusioned in his own writings record that fact that after the optimism of the Festival of Britain, uh, the Labour government was gone within months, the Conservatives came in, and there was a period of austerity during the 1950s and paternalism, and a lot of that optimism evaporated, and he was very disillusioned by that. <laughs> 